all good, Carol? So you all set? Are we rolling? Okay, well, you're very welcome to Awaken the Heart this Monday morning, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Well, Mountain Daylight Time right now because it's the summer. And we have a very exciting show today. <laughs> We're about to try something new. Uh, we have an outside broadcast where we are beaming in David Hoffmeister and Kirsten Buxton uh, live from the monastery. So when they're speaking, we'll have them up on full screen. Uh, I would just like to share that, that this is a new adventure, and so anything that can happen will, and anything that's given will, and we just really want to join in the joy of this this morning. So we're going to take it over now to the monastery and just say hi to David and Kirsten, and it's so lovely to have you join us. <laughs> hi, everyone. This is the hi. first beaming in <laughs> all the way from over, over here. <laughs> Yeah, it's been an adventure just getting ready this morning. We had ideas that we could we could beam in from outside with the canyon view and and then there were some gusty winds and so it turns out that we have the canyon view. <laughs> but we're inside where there's uh, there's no wind. It's just very still. So we're going for the most unpredictable setting which which will work well. Yeah. <laughs> And one of the reasons we wanted to broadcast from the monastery is because, um, yeah, we we spend as much time as we can out here. It's just so still. We have a couple guests from who are newlyweds uh, who came to visit us from Texas who are out here with us, staying in one of our, our domes mm -hmm. overlooking the canyon. But also, there are going to be two big events coming up, and we don't have that many, so it's kind of a, an opportunity to talk about them a little bit and and uh, showcase the the monastery a little bit because it's it's secluded and it's still and quiet and it's like a a quiet little peaceful haven away from the the world the perceptions of the world uh, you know out here the animal life pr provide most of the excitement and the movement there's not a lot of drama going out here except occasionally in the canyon or with the animal life but, uh, yeah, it's good to be out here to be able to talk about this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, just as you were talking about that, there was a hummingbird coming right up to the window. So. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're with us. They love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this morning as I was um, just praying about the, the show and the silent retreat that's coming up, at the end of September, it's like very end of September, it starts on the 30th through into October. And I was just praying about the importance of silence and prayer. And I mean, we live a, a prayerful life, and I think that's really the goal of A Course in Miracles is to, is to expand our time of prayer from what may start as you know, five minutes a day, ten minutes a day, one hour a day, to living a constant prayerful life where you feel like you're in constant asking and listening and receiving of the Spirit's plan. And it's really about stilling the mind to, to be able to ask and hear the Holy Spirit because when there's all the static in the mind, and the mind is really busy and preoccupied with past thoughts. The voice of the Holy Spirit really can't get through. And so I feel like a lot of what my function is actually is to remind everyone to pray and to, to pause and remember, you know, what is it for um, with everything we're doing and to bring full attention to, to this moment and using whatever it is that we're doing for remembrance of the Holy Spirit and to be in an awareness of of where our mind is at. And so the silent retreat is is an invitation to to have nothing else going on and to put this first, to actually put the stillness of the mind first and to be supported to um, to sink into that and to see what is blocking the ability to be still. Um, 
So just coming out and landing here at the monastery, it just feels like this place there is an instant reminder of, of be still and know that I am God. It's, it's so vast and there's not a lot going on in, in the canyon, you know, there's rocks. <laughs> there's rocks, so there's a river running through and just walking walking out and being here, you can feel this, just the stillness in the air. It's mm -hmm. very conducive, it's the perfect yeah. place for a silent retreat. Yeah. So. Yeah, there was a, an early Course in Miracles teacher who was, out of all of the early teachers, he was the one to emphasize silence. His name is Tara Singh, and he came from, the, from India, from the Sikh background, so it's kind of appropriate that he would be the one emphasizing silence coming from India, the mm -hmm. deep tradition of that, you know, non-dualism that's there and many amazing gurus and transcendent beings and saints and avatars coming from India. But uh, yeah, I would have to say that um, when the mind is trained, then this, this state of mind, this silent state of mind, you might say it goes with you everywhere you go, God goes with me everywhere I go, but when the mind is untrained, uh, you need symbols and you need to be led into that silence. And certainly that's why meditation and hermitages and things, uh, Kirsten and I have experienced quite a lot of those over the years. Mm -hmm. And they were very, very helpful and they still are helpful, I see, very practically for mind training because when you don't have uh, what Tara Singh called stimulation, he said uh, the mind that's deceived and the mind that's sleeping, it's, it's addicted to stimulation. Remember, the ego made the world, it projected the, the world. It, it's, the ego invented the five senses. God didn't create the five senses. God didn't create stimulation. God didn't create drama and conflict. God really has nothing to do with any of those things, and so if you want to know God, you can tell the direction you're going to be moving in is 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 having all that undone, and and that is a process that will take a lot of practice and devotion. I'm not kidding you with that. It will it will take everything that you've got uh, to to even move in that direction because ego is is addicted to stimulation. It invented the five senses. It uses the five senses and the veil of perception and all the projected images of linear time and space to defend against be still and know that I am God. It's, it's all a giant hallucination, a giant defense system against silence. So silence is no small thing and we're not talking about silence, it's silence uh, where your ears don't hear anything. Uh, that, you know, is not that difficult. You can just hop in your car or take a plane and, and go out into some place that's very, very distant and rural and you could, you know, for maybe a few hundred dollars you can manufacture some of uh, what seems to be silence of the ears. But this is a silence of the mind and this type of conducive background is, is very, very helpful because once you allow yourself to go into that, you know, you do see there's mind chatter, the monkey mind will come up and it gets quite stirred up by silence. It's, it's, it's quite threatened. Mm -hmm. it, it, goes, it goes into a, its caution mode, it goes into its fear mode and threat mode when it's, it's perceiving silence. Because silence and God are a great threat to the ego and the ego is being undone through, through the Holy Spirit. So, for example, when we arrived here, I came in and uh, Michael got us a couple bowls of, of soup and as I was just sitting out there uh, with the soup, it was serenely quiet, mm -hmm. serenely quiet. And we were watching a, a little chipmunk taking high hops in the tall grass and then after Kirsten went in to, to get her soup, um, I just noticed a big rabbit with long ears was sitting off to my side and we were just eye gazing for several minutes until um, our guest Vicky and Stephen walked by and then the rabbit hopped away. Uh, but it's, these are just like symbols for us. It's very natural to be in the mm -hmm. silence mm -hmm. and, and it's very nurturing and that's why we have these things called silent retreats. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the first event that really we have coming up here at the monastery. Mm -hmm. Kirsten mentioned the date starting on the 30th mm -hmm. of September. And so we're right here in the middle of the monastery just to invite you if you would like to come along for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll be just getting back from Europe and Kirsten will be here maybe in the middle of book tours and so forth. Mm -hmm. It'll be a punctuated, a very soft, quiet, still time here for us at the monastery. I'm so looking forward to it. It feels beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and, and the support for going into the silence, like, you know, David was sharing, the, the, there is a lot of fear of the silence. In fact, that is, that is the fear that's in the mind. It's fear of love. It's fear of being so absolutely still that there's a complete merge into the presence of God where there is no self left. That's what the ego is really afraid of. And um, and so there's a lot of support within a silent retreat to to come into that stillness and um, and to be in acceptance and non-judgment of whatever um, fear comes up or activity of mind comes up in response to the call to go into the silence. So I know for when I for me when I first started meditating, it was shocking to see how busy my mind was and. And how my thoughts were just going, and within an hour I could touch on a moment of silence, perhaps once or twice. And my meditation teacher at the time just said, that one moment is, is everything, and just don't judge against the rest of the time. Your, your intention to meditate is everything. And even if your mind is really busy at that time, just don't judge it if you spend your time judging the thoughts you're not meditating so just allow them to move through so we have that kind of support of coming together in groups to meditate or knowing that you can just go off and spend the whole time sort of on your own in the silence or coming together in silence to watch a movie or have an experiential heart opening session which is non-verbal like a massage type healing touch session just to allow the the invitation of gentleness and non-judgment um, so the mind can relax into it. So it's very much about the direction of our thinking and, and learning to train our mind towards the direction of the thinking because the, you know, the ego thoughts are always taking us away from the present moment. It's away to the future or back to the past or um, just always going elsewhere. And, and so we want to really practice and train the mind to notice that movement of thought and come back and come back and come back and know that that's really our, our practice and not to judge against it, to know that every time we're doing that we're strengthening this desire to be present and to be with God. So, yeah. so that's, that's one invitation and then as far as events at the monastery, uh, I think a lot of you know that there's a major um, Course in Miracles conference that usually has come every other year, although last year it was it, we did one in New York and then we did one in Las Vegas, but that's pretty rare. It's usually a pause in between and, and this year there will be an event at the monastery rolling around after the winter coming into spring in April that will be an opportunity to go deeper into the ideas. So we may have some silent times out here at the monastery, but basically we'll have we'll have sessions and experientials, and we're we're collaborating with James Swyman, who is putting together a conference in uh, Midway, which is probably about 50 minutes to an hour from the monastery, and um, probably about uh, we'll say about an an hour from the Salt Lake City Airport. So it's kind of midway between the Salt Lake City Airport and the monastery. And that'll be over Easter weekend actually. So it'll be an Easter retreat with lots of Course in Miracles speakers and then it will end on Sunday. Uh, and then uh, Sunday evening we will start a, a, a little retreat uh, here at the monastery that we'll, we'll roll on to start Sunday night on 
Easter, I believe it's going to be Easter weekend and then Sunday night we'll roll right into the depths. So there will be a number of speakers, Course in Miracles speakers, like there are uh, conferences, but there will be singing and there will be some interesting innovations that, that haven't been seen in conferences. And then for those of you that really want to come and attend the conference and then come out and really go into the depths of the teachings of A Course in Miracles, the, these deep mystical teachings and these very deep experiences that go beyond this world and are aimed at returning to the Kingdom of Heaven within, uh, in a very literal sense, um, then I believe it's a few days, right? We start on Sunday night. And I think it's Sunday through Wednesday. Sunday through Wednesday. Yeah. So that'll be another great opportunity and if, if you're listening to the first part about the Sound of Retreat and the fear is coming up and you're going, I don't think I'm ready for a week of silence, uh, there still be, we still do exercises, it's not pure silence, not like a Vipassana retreat or something, but um, if you feel like that's a bit threatening then that's something you may want to consider there. And then We'll roll on. Maybe you can share a little bit. Coming in July, mm. which is July... 16th to the 18th. 16th to the 18th, over, over a weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It'll be a celebration. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm so inspired by this event. It's, um, it's a celebration of inner peace event. And it's um, coming together to, to celebrate our love and our gratitude for A Course in Miracles as our path. And it feels like an honoring of um, the first four students of the course, who we all know well by name, at least most of us, Helen, Bill, Judy, and Ken, and the work of the Foundation for Inner Peace, um, who are the publishers of the course and who have, um, you know, the really, I think in some ways more than even getting the book out into the hands of the people because we all know Jesus is doing that <laughs> behind the scenes. It's not really people, but it's Jesus through those people. And I'm so grateful for those who um, I feel as like fellow um, devotees of this path who've just given their life over to serving Jesus in this way. Um, in a life of prayer, saying, okay, I don't know how this is going to work, I don't know how this is going to happen, but I commit my life to you and I'm willing to do your work. And that's what they did, that's what Judy, Helen, um, Bill and Ken did, they, they made the commitment together and from that commitment, you know, the course has been published and translated and shared and yeah, and I just feel like they're our extended family and um, and of course all of those original students now and the original founders of the Foundation for Inner Peace, they're, they're in their elder years, in their twilight years. There's uh, just Judy and um, Bob and B William, William Whitson, Whitson yeah. who Professor. are still living with us. Um, and they're passing the torch this year to Tamara, Judy's daughter, and her dear friend who... Um, came onto the board of the Foundation for Peace decades ago. Um, Judy actually gave him, this is Bob Rosenf Rosenthal, Judy gave him the course when it was still in the Black Binders. So he's been involved with the course right from then. Um, he's a course teacher and he is just very deeply committed to the, the clear message of the course continuing to go out, which is a very... Um, yeah, which as we know, the course in itself is so clear and so concise and so complete in itself. We just feel very joined with them in continuing the support um, as they step into these roles as co-presidents of the foundation to continue with this work with the course. So this whole event is, it feels like um, an honoring of those who have done this life work and of Judy and Wit and Bob um, and also just supporting through our gratitude the, the ongoing work of the foundation and coming together in joy like from meeting Tamara mm -hmm. that's the one yeah. thing that she says yes. she said to Jesus okay I will take on this function she heard it three times she said are you sure it's for me are you sure it's for me are you sure it's for me and Jesus said yes I don't make mistakes you're <laughs> definitely the one because she'll be the first to admit that she's not a Course in Miracles scholar and she wouldn't even say officially she's a Course in Miracles devotee student 
Um, it's funny I keep using the word devotee <laughs> right yeah. now, but it's all about this devotion. And he said, yes, it's for you. Um, and I feel the reason for that is because she is a spark. She is so fresh in her approach to everything, and she has this deep love and honor in her heart um, for those who have gone before her. I mean, she spent her whole life with them, you know, involved with their walk with the course. Yeah. So she'll bring a lot of, of lightheartedness and passion, and and I think when I was out with her and her mother and and with, we were all praying together, and um, what I heard was we'll, we'll do a, a fundraiser, F U N. Or A I S E R. It was she like, oh, that's great because instead of uh, this being the funds, the funds that are generated from this event will go all to support the foundation for inner peace. But where she's the fun part of the fundraiser, and and Bob, I have to say, is a very deep, devoted teacher. So where where she may have gone through the workbook once and not really read the text or the manual. Uh, Bob is very devoted. They're, they're a very good complimentary team and they'll be coming on as the co-directors. So, uh, where as Judy has done an amazing job and that was her role given by Jesus, now we have uh, co-directors coming in that complement each other in, in many ways. We know that that's how Jesus works, even with Bill and Helen and, and all of the assignments that came um, Read Eric Erickson, uh, the transgender man from Mexico who who pub paid for the, the first publishing of the book. You know, it's quite a team. Uh, a lot of, of Jewish people and a transgender man and Jesus had his team for the launch. And now this is to keep it disseminating and extending. I think it's in the 22 to 25 languages it's been translated mm -hmm. into and the beat just goes on and on. And they're very much with us. I mean, you know, it seems like people pass away, and even though, uh, as Kirsten mentioned, the first four students were really honoring them, even though um, Judy's the only one that remains right now, and Ken and Bill and Helen have passed on. Uh, just when when Kirsten picked me up from the airport, uh, I got a, a phone call from a woman who said, oh, she started talking about Helen Shuckman, and she said, here, I'm going to read you the a poem or a writing from the gifts of God, and this is Helen's birthday, so I didn't even know that I was getting picked up on Helen. So we really felt Helen's presence with that, and with all the, the, the lunches we've had, uh, I've had with Judy and her daughter, and with, you know, I feel their presence, and I've always felt Ken's presence comes through so many times in so many ways. I was talking about him recently in uh, Colorado at the Estes Park event. So, it's, it is a celebration and an honoring of the elders uh, of the tribe, so to speak, the ACIM tribe, and, mm -hmm. and it's going to be fun, and we just hope that you'll come and join in or participate in some way mm -hmm. of us showing our gratitude and honoring those that have come before us. And even now, when Kirsten just was talking and she mentioned the four students, the first four students, the hummingbird, uh, just came and just stopped and was looking in at us through this big window, right by this kind of jewel that we have. It paused right by this jewel that's hanging down there, and while she was talking, it just was looking in. So I feel like they're with us in a very strong way, even on these broadcasts. You know, it's like Jesus is behind all of this, and uh, and these are all the beloveds that He mm -hmm. is using in His plan of awakening. And so we're very thrilled to. Mm -hmm just be a part of the whole thing. Oh yeah, and what feels so beautiful about this being like a, a fundraiser, um, which officially it's called a fundraiser, is um, we've just, we've invited a number of really well-known Course in Miracles students as well to come, not to, um, to teach or to be presenters, but just to come and be in this vibe of, of celebrating our love for the Course and our love for these elders together, and so Gary Renard is coming, and he said, oh, I'll pay my own way, you know, I'll fly myself there, and it just touches me, I just feel like we have such a deep love for the course, and for, yeah, for this purpose, and um, Carol Howe is coming. Yeah, who, Bill Thetford's dear friend. Yeah, yeah, and it just feels, yeah, to be able to have them come here feels beautiful to be able to host them, and other friends are coming. I think Lisa Natoli wrote that she'll be away at that time.
but she just sends her love and support says any way I can help to get the event out and I think Maria Felipe will come over and um, your friend Bridget Trauma will come and yeah we've hardly started to put the word out yet but it's just yeah it feels really beautiful to come and and James Twyman will be here he's a big yes for this and playing music and um, of course we've got the stage so it feels like we're going to have this really big kind of festival vibe of a, a gratitude event together. Yeah, it's a mixture of uh, generations mm. of the course from those that are fairly new to, to those that have been at it for decades, uh, yeah. many decades. And certainly uh, we, we have had the thought too that we might even try to do a pre-recording uh, with, with perhaps Judy or some others, but um, but it's interesting, you know, the visits to Judy, you know, she says, well, we're just enjoying the moment because they feel this is definitely the twilight of their life and they know that anything can happen at any time and so mm -hmm. after some of the visits she would say to me after lunch, uh, come back soon, we don't know if we'll be here. <laughs> so, you know, it's beautiful, they're, they're just so full in the love and the joy and, and have done such a magnificent job and really fulfilled their parts so beautifully. So we'll see just how that all goes. Uh, I think uh, Tamara was saying, you know, when we talked to them, she said, when is it going to be? Next year, you know, her mind can't even go there. And to tell you the truth, my mind and our mind can't really go there either, but we're here with you now talking about it, but that's about as far as we go. We never really look ahead to anything and then the, when it just kind of rolls up in the script so to speak mm. uh, then we're just we're happy we're, but we're just rejoicing all the way so yeah. you know we're not really into certain days or events in the future or holidays or all that stuff because it's such a living presence for us every day is Easter every day is Christmas and every day is a celebration but but this will be this will be something that will really touch a lot of hearts because there's been a lot of devotion around the Course mm -hmm. of Miracles, and this it's always fun mm -hmm. when you can bring people together for that celebration. Yeah, yeah, we're going to celebrate inner peace. That's why it's such a joy to talk about it now. Yeah. <laughs> it really is this moment. And I had this beautiful, inspiring idea this morning of like, oh, I could um, call and interview. You know, these ones who are coming who have mentioned. Um, and just interview them and say, okay, we've got 10 minutes. You know, yeah. Just share your love for A Course in Miracles and your gratitude for the, you know, our elders. And let's just join in that and do some short interviews with everyone before they come and share them. Because it just, yeah, it feels like an ongoing honoring that's starting now. Like we've got a whole mm. year to, yeah. <laughs> to be in this vibe. And that's what it feels like to me every time I start talking about it. I just get so lit up in my heart. It just feels... So beautiful. Yeah. 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 It's it is and it is it'll be fun to have it out here amongst nature, you know, the mm. beautiful cliffs and uh mm. valley and everything that's around us and, and all of the animals, uh they're always a big part of it. And it's some in many ways it feels like when we come out here we're coming out and it's really it's it's their territory, mm. you know, and we're just coming in here and we're gracing them by our presence, they're gracing us with their presence and mm -hmm. and it feels um, you know, very, very precious and 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 this is ongoing. This this place is also available for personal stays, you know, if you feel to just come out and and practice stilling your mind. Uh, we have some people our, our friend Calico was here and Michael was saying she's planning to come back here and uh, and others have come too that have have had profound uh, turnarounds in their mind just from from coming here, and the personal stays uh, are just amazing. Another friend, Rita, uh, from California, was just he was just talking. To, she was talking to Michael too about possibly coming for a, a personal stay before the mystery school. We're having the it's another thing I forgot about. We have the mystery school <laughs> next. Uh, next May, but she was talking about maybe coming for a personal stay before the mystery school, just as a way of going inward, deeper, deeper, and and getting deeper into that vibe, 
and so she's just revving up to the mystery school. Mm -hmm. So, and that's yeah, that's another event. It's not really an event; is it's a four-week uh, immersion, immersion mm -hmm. but during all of May. So, mm -hmm. so if you go to nondualityonline.com, mm -hmm. if you want to find out more about the mystery school, that's mm -hmm. that's there too. And yeah, that's probably if if you're ready to really take the lid off of of your mind and, and expose the ego and, and penetrate deep into your mind and take, uh, as Neil Armstrong said, one giant leap for mankind, uh, that's, going to the moon will be, seem like nothing <laughs> compared to going through a mystery school for four weeks, uh, that's all I could say. Mm. A trip to the moon, it seems like a, like a, a small thing, like eating a piece of cheese compared to, to, uh, you know, going through this immersion, and and there's so much that's being geared towards that. Uh, it's just ongoing. There will be mystery schools around the world, just like there have been ancient mystery schools in different parts of the world. Uh, we'll have our first mystery school during the month of May mm -hmm. here in 2016, but then three months later in September, uh, we'll roll around again with another one in a different part of the world, and then three months later another one. So, yeah, if you really <laughs> want to go deep, uh, and you really are not threatened by anything we've talked about today, <laughs> then <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Silence, joy, celebration, <laughs> gratitude. <laughs> right. If none of that is threatening to you, then <laughs> A Course in Miracles, then the Mystery School is, is going off the deep end. <laughs> it's beautiful. So, Sarah, how are, you, how are things going there in the home studio? <laughs> we'll roll, we'll throw it back to you. My life was? <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I felt there, there's, you guys are just so wonderful. It's lovely to see the one mind doing the sharing of the dates and everything. I have this feeling that part of what's really wonderful about the, um, the Celebrating Inner Peace event is that we have camping available. And that means that anyone who's really feeling that very strong call and maybe has already started to, to simplify their lives by having camping as part of it, it keeps the overheads very low for them coming because it's only $70 for the weekend to come and stay um, at the monastery. And then, and then the event fee, which is the donation that's going to uh, the, the Foundation for Inner Peace, aside from basic costs, that just feels really wonderful because... I feel particularly in America, and at this time of the year, people love making almost like a camping pilgrimage type trip. And what better focus could you have than, you know, caravanning towards the Living Miracles Monastery and setting up your tent and being in presence and that recommitment to the purpose of your life for the weekend. And, and really, there is a lovely feeling of a groundswell of having everyone at the monastery for, for those two, two and a half, three days together from the 16th to the 18th. And I think that even though there's other accommodations and people can stay in hotels locally or anything, and we have a certain amount at the monastery for staying as well, that the idea of camping, the idea of a whole course group deciding to come mm -hmm. and come together and have their own little circle where they're staying and have bring back to wherever they've come from that recommitment and that devotion to to this pathway that's been given to us because there's some idea sometimes that you choose a pathway but i think um all of us at least i discovered that you just get given one <laughs> it just is presented <laughs> to you and and this is really um i guess the word commitment keeps coming up our just our joy of watching the commitment of the first four students and what it took to make the commitment first and not know what it would mean for their lives. Mm -hmm. And so part of this is, as well as being a complete celebration, is the other C word in my mind uh, of commitment and the joy of commitment and a celebration of the relief of making that commitment first in our lives and letting everything else follow. So that just feels very mm -hmm. valuable too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's beautiful. I, I think it will offer something for everything too, because even when... There are some of you probably tuning in and going, oh, camping, oh, I, I don't know if I want to camp. But that's okay too, because we, we, 
we have a cute little old western town and for some of you, if you come and, and visit Duchesne, uh, it kind of looks like Duchesne if you, if you try to pronounce it phonetically, but it's Duchesne. Uh, and it's like an old wild west town. Um, I have to say it's just absolutely delightful every time I go there. There's, and there's a Motel 6 and, and a pretty new one mm, down there. Yeah, and, just you in know, time for our festival. And some yeah. restaurants and, you know, small town western cafes and diners and, mm. you know, it's like going back to the old west with the diners and it's just really nice and then if even that's a little bit uh, wild for you then the other direction is, is Heber which is you know all kinds of different motels, amenities, um, movie theaters and all kinds of restaurant opportunities and so forth. So you know if somebody really wanted to come here and just enjoy the weekend like Sarah was saying to camp would be very intimate. You'll be right here the whole weekend if you feel to, you want to in the evenings go and 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 have uh, a little more than camping. Then there'll be opportunities. Uh, I would say with the people that are the presenters and and the people we've invited, yeah, the the, the housing at the monastery will will be quite filled up. We might mm. have a group of us sleeping on couches or or who knows what, uh, just to make sure we have enough room for everyone we're who's invited, but um, there'll be a lot of, of accommodations there and it's, I think it'll be something for everyone really. It'll be beautiful. Mm. Like 4th of July, instead of 4th of July weekend with fireworks, you can come to celebrate God and waking up to God with, with your Course in Miracles friends and so uh, it'll, it'll still have that big celebration feeling like uh, we have on the 4th of July here in the United States, but this will be, you know, very reverent as well, and very reverent towards this purpose. Mm. Yeah. And Tamara is our main contact for that event. So, um, if you're bursting after all of the sharing about it, you can email her um, directly. We have an email address set up for her, innerpeace at livingmiracles.org. And inner peace at livingmiracles.org. That goes straight to Tamara, and she can connect with you about it. And it's our Tamara too. We, we have there's Tamara Morgan, <laughs> Judy's oh, yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah. So don't start trying to contact Tamara, <laughs> Judy Scutch's <laughs> daughter. She'll be she'd have a fit if she started receiving emails from this. Mm -hmm. But it's our Tamara. <laughs> Tamara Youngblood. Tamara, Tamara Youngblood. Young and yes. all the information is on the monastery website too. We have. Um, miracles-monastery.org is where you can find the events. So. Yeah. And the conference information actually, we have a conference website, acim-conference.net. Yeah. And that has all of the events on, including the conference with James Twyman, with the follow-up retreat here. And, yes. uh, yeah. Don't stop shopping. Yeah. Just <laughs> sign up for the on one website, because it, mm. well, it actually links to the other sites and everything, but it's all it's all listed there. Including the mystery school? No, I think uh, the mystery school the mystery is school. was not considering considered a, a retreat or a conference, but mm -hmm. but as I said, ACAM or not ACAM, non duality online dot com. Uh, it's been a lot earlier this year poured into that website mm -hmm. and it's quite amazing. Mm -hmm. if, if you're even wondering what is a mystery school, hmm, wow, you go and visit that website and your head may be spinning um, because it's it's really the uh, depth of all the ancient traditions have have pointed to what the course is pointing to of, of going beyond transcending this world, mm -hmm. and that's really what what the purpose of life is is to forgive the world and and then transcend it and experience the kingdom of heaven within. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. 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 I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes, mm -hmm. we can. Yeah. I just feel that this this mon monastery, as we call it, has, has been like a gift. And there's just such a joy in extending it. It's almost like with all the mind training that everyone's been doing over the years, there's a stability. And when people come for these silent retreats, 
the mind is just like held in the canyon and it's held in the space and it's held by the devotion of those who are surrounding you and yeah and i i would just like to say that my experience of it has been that and i just feel very grateful mm. for having the gift of being able to go out there too so yeah i would encourage everyone you know even if they've had a thought that silence is something that fear may come up the container is is ideally prepared the nest the womb experiences there and so it it becomes extremely safe and and inviting for the mind yeah. so yeah i just want to share that it's really beautiful and, and here too everybody's just been sinking into that same devotional container here at canvas and yeah so i appreciate the support i appreciate the support of the first four i appreciate the support david of you and messengers and and everyone who goes before because like we can't do this alone so yeah. thank you yeah it's, it's it's got like a an ancient uh reverent vibe to the whole thing i mean we we all just gathered there in in camas to watch the new jesus movie the young messiah and all of our hearts were stirred up and our visitors from texas and of course stephen came all the way via perth australia they were just overwhelmed stephen was overwhelmed earlier with the, with the church service with all the love and then we all felt just so deep in the experience watching a, a movie of a, a young Jesus, like a, a seven-year-old Jesus, uh, and it was quite amazing. And and I remember in that movie uh, when they were coming back from um, Alexandria, it, Egypt, because they had fled with Herod, killing all the, the the male children that were born because of the, the prophecies around around Jesus and the King of the Jews and all this and that, but they were coming back and they were really kind of fleeing and, and trying to uh, make their way, but kind of being a bit hunted and pursued. And at one point they said, oh, we can go there. The Essenes will help us. And it was funny, I, there was that word Essenes again. Uh, some of you who, who know of the Essenes know that there was a mystical community around the time of Jesus and here was a seven-year-old Jesus and it was right in the storyline that the scenes will help us because they were very deep, very mystical, very devoted. Mm -hmm. Some people have compared our community to the Essenes or to the Cathars. The Cathars came much later than the, you know, in Europe, but they were the ones that were given the choice from the Catholic Church to renounce all of their beliefs uh, and to adopt the beliefs of the Holy Mother Church, the Catholic Church, or to walk into the fire, and they probably 200 of them walked into the fire. But they were mystics that, that had this experience that the world was not real. Uh, and we had a friend, Elizabeth, from down in uh, Santa Fe, I think she's maybe moved on from there uh, to another part. But she's actually, when she first came here, she's originally from, from Europe, I believe from France, and mm -hmm. she she said, oh my God, this, this, these scenes, everything, this is like the Cathars. Mm -hmm. she, she felt a strong connection. And why do I bring up the, the Essenes and the Cathars, except they're, they're very devoted, deep, mystical communities that have existed in history. And there was a time too when I was visiting Judy at lunch and she was telling me the story of how Ken Wabnick and Bill and Helen all went to the Middle East. They went to what was Galilee, you know, and to, to walk around those areas and it took their little trip and at one point um, um, Helen wasn't feeling well and um, she really didn't want to get out of the car and it was very hot but they, the, the rest of them, their party got out and they kept coming over to say, Helen just, just get out and it's, just don't sit in this metal car, it's just so hot and just stand there. But um, they, Judy told the story how uh, when they came to this uh, one area, um, Helen was very, very uh, distraught and and it was, she said, this is the burial ground where all of them, um, all of the four of them uh, had, had been Essenes and they'd all been murdered and all been buried in the same grave. Oh, wow. And so, uh, 
When Helen and Bill first received the course, they thought it was very esoteric. It was too esoteric. They were research psychologists, so too esoteric really for the world. They, they didn't really see what would happen with the course and publishing and mm -hmm. all the language translations. But they did feel that, that there would be just a small group of people that would actually practice and live the course during the first generation. And to me, all this ties together, obviously with the, the scenes and the cathars, is that there is, community is just a symbol, but there is a real depth in living it, practicing it, applying it with everyone around you on a full-time, 24-7 basis. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a strong synergy. I don't even know if synergy is even a strong enough word because it's the miracle becomes so habitual and so consistent and you begin to reach higher and higher states of mind seemingly it's all within the dream but those are all metaphors as well and so there's something about doing this celebration out here uh, in these canyons uh, of uh, of Utah uh, there's something about these lands, our, our friend Diana sometimes calls them the Holy Lands now. <laughs> There's a lot of seeming strife over there where Jesus had walked, but these are, are quite serene uh, places and, and the interactions are very deep and ancient and uh, some people, I think Lisa one time was living here for a while, she told somebody, come on, you've got to see this, it's biblical. <laughs> She started calling these canyons biblical and in Utah, rural Utah. You know, for many people they would laugh and they would say, well that's a little bit out of context. But when you consider everything that's happening uh, and, and you consider the depth of things and you start to be aware like I am of, of the culture and the history of the Course and the nuances and everything, uh, I think that's probably why you're feeling this swirl in your heart, Kirsten, because mm -hmm. there's something you know, that's very profound underneath all of this. It's mm -hmm. just appearances, mm -hmm. like every other appearance, but there's something very profound underneath it that's using the appearances mm -hmm. to take us very, very, very deep mm -hmm. into a, a very profound otherworldly mm -hmm. experience or an experience that's beyond this world. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, there's it's just an honor that comes of a respect and honor with just being a part of something like that, mm -hmm. you know, it really, uh, it really touches my heart. And I know that we have a whole year to mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of just ex keep extending that yeah. that feeling that we're feeling right now. Yeah, we're really honoring our own relationship with God, and I think even over the last couple of years, there has been, you know, you get to that point of the, the course and he says, you know, put down this course, put down, you know, just basically let go of this world and let go of all the tools and come to God with holy empty hands. And for many of us we've actually found ourselves putting the book down um, even up to a number of years. I've done that myself. I just no longer read it. I just heard heard it constantly in my mind. Just the reference point towards that truth was just so set that there is no need to read the print, and yet, just in this last number of months, I, Jesus is bringing it back in, and he's saying, I don't bring attention to it. The course is your path, this is your life, this is for you to share, this is for you to extend, this is like bringing attention to it, and I know Lisa's heard that too, and we just switched places recently. I came back up to Utah, from Mexico and she left Utah to go down there and she kept hearing you're going to go down there and read the course. So she went out and was looking for a recliner chair <laughs> um, so that she could just be there and fully accept this next prompt from Jesus to be in mm. Mexico and read the course. And yeah, the mystery school is all based on these deep teachings of the course. You know, of course they're found in the deepest non-dual teachings, you know, throughout the world, but this is the way that's been given us, and um, it's a joy to recognize that same truth in these other paths, but at the end of the day, this is our one path, and I feel like, um, yeah, we're now being called, or for myself anyway, I'm being called now to just bring attention to it. Um, so, yeah, it's a joy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I'm finding a course book, and it's sitting on my bed all the time. The last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. I was there, and you don't go, 
course books right on my bed yeah. there every day. <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm just picking it up and just reading, and it's, you know, reading through a lesson, and it's just like a love letter. It's like every time I pick it up, it's like, oh, oh, thank you. So, mm. Mm. yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. It just feels like um, I'm just in deep appreciation that all the technology worked and flowed first. So <laughs> <laughs> the joining was possible. JC and, Central. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, just what you were just sharing, Kirsten, just reminded me of my experience with the course because I got in an isolation. I didn't have any outward intellectual concepts to go with it or things that I'd heard from other people. And I literally just was opening it and dependent on what I would hear in my mind to understand it because I had no uh, context when I received it. And I just put out a post today for one of our, our websites, which is a searchable form of, of A Course in Miracles, which makes it so easy. You just put in a word search. It's called um, ACIM Now. And I put the picture of a baby reading the book because, you know, it's not that we have to figure out or understand anything. And some people sometimes when they put it down for a while, of course, they have this thought that they didn't quite get it or understand it. And you can just have it open <laughs> and put your eyes on it. And I just really feel that it's just that invitation to the spirit to just those lessons of love to be constantly whispering them in our ear and... Yeah, and I just, because that's what I did just before I came here, just it's fresh in my mind of just coming as little children again to it. That's where I am. Yeah. <laughs> and, and not having anything and being shown. Yeah. Okay. It's so a, it's called A Course in Miracles A Course in Miracles Now. Now.com. Because ACM Now is, is also a Facebook page. But uh, yeah, it's A Course in Miracles Now.com. We got Michael here from SEO, and so he, he both he and I. <laughs> Picked it up right away. We have so many. We websites. know what site you're talking about, but yeah, but it's, that's the one you gotta type in. That's and SEO also, wisdom <laughs> coming through. And also, there. <laughs> literally, literally, Utah is the number one place in the world to film Jesus movies in because ah. it's like these things so similar. And the greatest story ever told was filmed here, and I think the the Young Messiah was filmed here too. So it just that symbolism is being noticed by the world and, mm. and I'm in appreciation with this. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even plan that. Jesus just sent us out here yeah. and we've been getting yeah. all those questions from Stephen and Victoria like, how did you get to Utah? And it's like, well, we can try to tell you the story, but none of us could ever have predicted. And Michael's come all the way mm. from Australia and, and we were all sitting around having lunch there at Camus and I think almost everyone around the table was from different regions of the world, mm -hmm. so it's quite a, an eclectic group, but here we are, uh, converging in the desert <laughs> again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> An oasis in the desert, so it's yeah. like. Yeah. Like the little garden part of the course, I feel really that's all we're sharing this morning is, is uh, the invitation to the, the little garden, the oasis for people to come and be refreshed and move back into mm. whatever is seemingly given for them refreshed. Mm. Just yeah. as like an outward picturing of that passage in the Course. Mm. Yeah. Miracles fall like healing mm. drops of rain on a dry and thirsty world. Mm. <laughs> and that's the way it feels. Yeah. yeah. That's the way it feels in our lives. Our, our mm. lives were dry and dusty and thirsty, even when they were trying to set up for a beautiful canyon shot this morning, the winds, the dusty winds were were whipping up and the person said, I think, we, I don't know, we might have to find another location. But it got very calm uh, right before the broadcast started, so we've been mm -hmm. looking out over, uh, through beautiful windows at a very calm scene. All the, the trees are very still and serene and the only movements we've seen are these uh, hummingbirds that are, there's hummingbird feeders around, so there's lots of, lots of hummingbirds around us. Mm. But uh, everything else is very still right now. Mm. We're going to do a little panning shot this morning. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It was just mm. really beautiful to have you two beam in. Mm. 
And yeah. it's just in, in this welcome and invite to the garden in an experience now. Those events are upcoming, but this is an invitation now. So thank you. Thank yeah. you, David. Thank you. And Michael is going to just give you a little panoramic view for all of our ones tuning in while we have a chance. We don't get to do this very often for the monastery, so you, <laughs> we get smaller and smaller, and Michael... <laughs> <laughs> you can see a studio. That's yeah, a studio. It's a there. studio. <laughs> good morning, America, and good morning, world. And now, uh, is Jesus? Mm. Look, isn't that a great Jesus? About <laughs> 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 the lightest flowers. But, mm. Oh, and there's Stephen Bean down there. <laughs> <laughs> the He's our guest with his new wife, the Joy. And the Kenyan in the back. We finally did get that view. That window did get used. We got the view. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, many blessings. I'm so grateful to be on this path together. <laughs> We're so blessed. <laughs> many blessings. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> 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 what do I gazing at and cut?